Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to, what is this, episode 135 of Dev Chatter. Uh, let me go ahead and adjust the volume there for all of you. And uh, I am going to start up our chatbot. Hello, welcome everyone. Greetings, glad you are all here. I don't know why I opened two instances of this, but the bot should be in the chat. Hopefully it only said hello one time. It did. Greetings. Uh, yes, it is the 5th of November. That is correct, SNB. Uh, hopefully you are having a good time and uh, being safe with that. <laughs> Two bots is better than one. Uh, sometimes, except when they fight. Uh, so hello, hello everyone, greetings, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever it is that you are. Hopefully you are having a good start to the week. It is a Monday stream, so uh, this is our pretty normal Monday stream start time. And uh, I see a lot of familiar faces already in the chat, so welcome. Uh, two bots equals one hu human. Roughly speaking, Will. Roughly speaking. Uh, depends on the bot, depends on the human. Uh, stream seems to be lagging again today. Uh, doesn't appear to be on my end, Coded Beard. So, uh, I'm not sure. If anyone else is seeing that, let me know. I hope the stream's not lagging, because that is never a fun way to begin things. Okay, so. Today, let's go ahead and get started with some of our coding. So, as I mentioned at the, in our uh, announcements that I made about the stream coming today, uh, I am planning on working on our interactive stream game again. So we are going to continue on that project, uh, but before I do, I want to make a couple of quick announcements before we jump right into that code. Announcement number one. Tomorrow is a guest stream, so we are going to have a guest here. And if you ever want to find out information about upcoming streams when I do have special stuff planned, uh, I put it here in the uh, uh, stream info section on our GitHub. So if you take a look at this and you're paying attention here, you will usually know when I have a guest stream coming up. So today, uh, no special topic, we're just writing some code together, but tomorrow uh, we are going to be coding with a topic and with a guest. So hopefully all of you will be here when Rachel talks uh, with us. And we're going to take a look at some of our code and see if we can make it uh, better. We'll say better, as that is a good term for it. Okay, so, um, actually, I just realized that says might be canceled or rescheduled, but it won't be. That one, that one's cool. Uh, and this one is canceled or rescheduled. There we go. Committing changes, fixing it. Hey, Slips, welcome. Okay. Schedule fixed. Love how easy that is. Always makes it nice. Alright. Couple of things. First off, if you are new here, take a look in our Discord. It's the best place to chat with me and the other developers that you find here on Dev Chatter. Uh, all you gotta do is click that link and that will uh, get you in the process of getting into Discord. Discord's a chat application that allow you to talk with us. Uh, it is commonly used by gamers, uh, Twitch streamers, and it is also commonly used by teams that are like building creative projects together. Uh, so you can find out that sort of stuff over there. Uh, hello, long time no see. You have a question. Which uh, do you think is better? Which one is fine? And would you recommend to use Photoshop with either? Um, I don't have a good question for you there, Bork to Orc. Um, although, now that I've said your name, that does sound familiar, so I think you ha you were here a long time ago. And uh, thank you for uh, adding me there, because that uh, does make sure I get my, get my attention onto the question. Um, I don't usually use Photoshop that often, um, and part of the reason why is it's overkill for a lot of the stuff I do here on the stream. Uh, most of the stuff I do here on the stream I use Paint.net for, um, and I know a lot of other people that use uh, GIMP instead of Photoshop, but they can both work pretty well. Um, Code Adam Red, welcome. Uh, and uh, Will, uh, I do not have the next uh, session with uh, Mr. Bub's TV scheduled, but we will probably get another one of those going at some point. Uh, maybe that'll be this Thursday. Uh, maybe that'll be next Thursday. It will not be the Thursday after that because that's uh, Thanksgiving for everybody in the U.S. Uh, but we'll get, a, we will get that scheduled and figured out. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into some code. Uh, you're welcome, Bork. Uh, sorry I couldn't get you a better answer on that one. Um, okay, 
here is what I want to do. First off, I want to make sure no pull requests that I really need to deal with today, no issues that I really need to jump on. So, um, uh, Will, always, I think everybody's always got stuff to give thanks for. Uh, there are a lot of things in all of our lives that uh, we have to be thankful for. And uh, a lot of us should probably be thankful for them more often than once a year, but hey, at least there's a holiday that makes sure we don't uh, forget about doing it at least once. <sighs> now that I think about it, maybe I should do like a recording and have like a premiere go on Thanksgiving, so some kind of, you know, thanks video kind of thing. Uh, we'll think about it. It's a good idea, though. Thank you for that uh, suggestion there, Will, even though I don't think that was actually your suggestion, but uh, I'm going to thank you for it all the same, because it got me thinking on that line. Okay, um, so here's what I want to do. First off, uh, where did I leave? Did I... hang on. Hang on. Alright, I closed that window, so that's the one I want. Okay. Sorry, lost track of where I left that window. So now that we've got this up, uh, let's talk about the state of the code that we are working on. So anybody that's been here in the past bunch of streams knows that we have been working on a roguelike game. So a roguelike, for those of you that don't know, is... Um, basic description is there was a game called Rogue made a long time ago. Any game that basically is like Rogue we usually call like a roguelike or a rogue clone. Uh, those are a couple of common terms. Uh, I use them pretty interchangeably, but they're, the idea is it is a game where you give an input of like a, you know, directional input, you're moving around on a procedurally generated map, fighting monsters, collecting loot, and that sort of thing. Uh, they're fairly strategic because of the fact that the game doesn't run without you. So let me go ahead and start up the game. Uh, the second one uh, will, so like, rogue, like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and say auto start, uh, and, and name equals dev chatter. Okay. So, I didn't start this the correct way, um, and the reason why is uh, just because I wanted to have this because I can refresh the page just a little easier. Um, normally the way this game starts is actually from chat, so within the chat window you can go ahead and tell this game to start and it will start up a game. Uh, there's a couple of things that we have on here. We have our player character. We have a little spot where a zombie is going to be spawning. We have a little exit marker that is the goal that we're trying to get to to exit. We're going to need to draw some kinds of graphics for that at some point instead of just having like a little exit label. Um, but that's what I put in because uh, I eventually want to have it be like doors and maybe like um, uh, a sewer ladder that you could go down into the sewers and things like that. So we got to come up with some kinds of art for what we want to have and then we can start having different level types and things like that. It could be very fun. And then there's this little axe down here uh, that you can see that um, I'm going to try to pick up. And I did, and I got to kill a zombie with my axe. Um, the axe is a one-time use item, though. So there we go, I made it to the next level. And I can sort of just play like this. And I'm gonna die here because I can't get to that exit. So this is the concept for the game. Now to show you how it works, just to give everybody uh, this, you know, get everybody on the same footing here, uh, let me go ahead and do this so that you all have an idea of what it is we're doing here. Hang on. I am going to pull this over. So let me shrink this window. Make a little bit of space on here. So this normally would appear on my screen right there below me. Uh, so you'd see it in that spot right, right over there. 
But we aren't doing that yet. And in order to show you that, I'm gonna bring the chat on. So this is the standard Twitch chat. So, you know, I can, I can say hi and, and that's the regular chat. You guys should have all seen that. Uh, if I go to one of our rooms and I go over to the game room, this is where I wanna do one thing. I am going to give the command, move down. And when I do that, I immediately get the game over because my character just walked into a zombie because he was fighting without a weapon he takes one point of damage. And now you'll notice the bot just reported back in the main chat. Uh, so you can see that over on the window on the on the right hand side of the screen there, uh, that I died on level three with 54 points. So some of that is now recorded in the database. So let's take a look at that. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and open up that table where we recorded that data and the reason why is that I want to show you I want to set it up so that we can actually have these matches start happening and start meaning something so where is it uh, so there's survivors what do I call it game end records here it is okay so there's the survivor ID so that that was roughly speaking me only it wasn't me I don't think maybe it was uh, level number three 54 points so there it is and the time was uh, the 5th of November and 7 15 p.m. so that must be UTC because that's not what it is in my time zone so there we go uh, works like a charm all right a couple of things we need to do Let's go ahead and have this game trigger. So, um, I want dungeons to, uh, yes, s &B, we're going to do sound effects, 100%. There will be sound effects. Um, probably the sound effects are going to be limited to just when the player dies and when a game starts. Because um, I don't want it to be distracting to the people watching the stream too much. So I want to let people know, hey, there's an event going on that you can interact with um, and that it ended. But I don't want it to be like, I don't want, I don't want like zombie sounds all the time and things like that. Because I think that, um, yeah, so I, 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 <laughs> I could s &B, but if I, if I add those kinds of sounds, I'm going to keep them really minimal. Uh, so I'm going to want those to be very light, uh, low volume so that they don't distract from uh, whatever stream they end up on. Okay. So, uh, I did a couple of things. I had made, in the previous ones, I made a list of survivors. And right now, I am the only survivor in here. And, oh, it made two instances of me because uh, it based it on user ID, which I didn't specify. So, I should actually get rid of that record we just added today. Because that one is bad. You'll remember I told you that I started up the game incorrectly. If I'd started it correctly, all the data would have been fine, I think, because it would have used my user ID and everything. Okay, next thing, I added in teams. So teams are um, what we're all able to join. So a survivor is on a team. Uh, I have not put myself on a team yet, but I probably will. Uh, I think it makes the most sense to put me on the dinosaurs team. So that being, you know, this being Dev Chatter, our mascot is a dinosaur. If you haven't seen it, uh, it is this guy right here that I just posted in chat. And if you really want to see it, I th do I have my overlay turned on? We're about to find out if I have my overlay turned on. Nope, I don't have my overlay turned on. Okay. <laughs> that answers that question nicely. Okay. So I have joined the uh, dinosaurs team. We're going to add a way to do that later. But here's what I want to get started. I want to make it so that um, we have a background process running in our bot that is going to start up one of these games. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's make a background, uh, make a background process of some kind that gets going. Uh, so we're going to open up the Wasteful module, and we're going to have, um, 
Let's see. We need some kind... So we need a name for what this is. Um, for now, I'm going to use the name Scheduler, and we're going to come up with something else. And I shouldn't have called it Dungeon. That's... So we're not necessarily a dungeon. Um, what do we call one of these? Game? Game Scheduler? Game Scheduler. There we go. So it'll be the Game Scheduler. Let's take a look at our eventing. Is that the one we need? No, that's not the one we need. Automation, that's the word. There it is. Uh, repeating callback action. Uh, can you recommend a database that's free to host a .NET Core app on my own host? Uh, Hawkbird Gaming. Um, that is a great question. Um, I don't know what, what you're hosting or anything like that. Uh, but my recommendation for getting an initial database for development is to use a local DB, which is a SQL Server database. Um, it is fairly lightweight and should work for that kind of thing. And uh, no problem on the on the naming there, Hawkbird Gaming. Uh, very likely, if you did an autocomplete, it would have gone to that one anyway. You know, the the English name wins out over the Irish name usually. I am used to that. Uh, so let's call this a repeating callback action. It's going to be our scheduler. So the reason I want to have it run this way is that I want um, the scheduler to check and see whether or not we should be running a game. So I want our automation system to just automatically call this thing and let us know, hey, and just check with us and say, hey, is it time to do a thing? If so, then, you know, let's let's do that thing. Okay, a couple of changes I want to make here. So this has it, uh, be because the repeating callback action takes into its constructor an interval in seconds and a callback, it put those here. I don't want that. So we're not going to have those there. The... We may have settings, but I'm not going to pull them out just yet. So for now, I'm going to make a constant that I'm just going to call, um, well, you know what? I'm just going to leave that blank for now because I think we can just use the default one. This is going to be a callback and I want it to be do something. Okay, there we go. Do something that is the best name for a method ever created. I will not hear any arguments made for any other method. Uh, JamieJ82, hey, welcome. Uh, I am doing fairly well. So, game scheduler, do something. I uh, hope, hope you and everyone else here in the chat is doing pretty well this week. Uh, so, what do we want to do? Um, check for... Uh, game, let's say start game, uh, open game if needed. I think that's the word I want. Okay, so here's what we're going for. <laughs> Do something worky work. Exactly, Joko. <laughs> Do something worky work. All right, open game if needed, I think is the name we actually want. Uh, I usually like to just toss in something to get it get it compiling. So so here's the significant thing. We are at the point where this code compiles, and that's that's a win. So, uh, Farouk, hey, welcome. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I also have a headache, but I think mine's weather-related. Uh, it just warmed up to, like, you know... Uh, I'll, I'll give you our, our American uh, system and say like 60 some degrees or something from like 40 so it's kind of annoying all right the project compiles I know it does it won't build right now because of the fact that or we have our DLLs locked because the website is actually running uh, so open game if needed I think that's gonna be right 
So here's what we want to do. Check if game already running. So um, actually we'll say, uh, I'll just say return if game already running. Because uh, we don't have anything to do then. Um, return if uh, game uh, open for joining. And lock game start. It's the first thing we want to do. So prevent anybody else from starting. So we may actually want to use an actual lock here just to be sure. Uh, Farouk, uh, yeah. Uh, I can show a little bit of gaming for anybody that showed up uh, late. Uh, oops, I hope that's reconnected there. Okay. So here's the game. It's right down here. Uh, once it starts up, you can go ahead and play the game. Oh man, this is going to be a good one. I hope. That's going to hurt. Hey, Mike, welcome. Thank you for that uh, tier one uh, sub there. Uh, that is two months in a row, so welcome. Hey, I bet you're lurking in the back somewhere. Uh, so Snakehead, this is the game we're basically making, is this one right here. Um, and I got killed there, which is fine. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. We were just given a quick example of how the game works, and it should report back. I died on level 5 with 115 points right there. So that's the game we're building. The significant thing about it is that I was controlling it to show you the game using a keyboard, but that's not the way it's intended to be played. It's intended to be played in the chat, and I would like it to be that we're eventually saying, you know, up, right left, down, things like this, right? Uh, for now, I've got move and directions that you have to give it. Um, very likely what we're going to make it do is do like, you know, move right four or something like that. I'm amazed that did not throw an exception there <laughs> when trying to do a move without a game running, but who knows? Anyway, I must have actually put in the safety for that. I am surprised by this. Okay. Um, as I said, we're going to lock the game to get it started, and then we are going to open it up for joining. So what I want to do is this. I want to have um, people request to be the one that plays the game. Uh, we'll, we'll pick, announce who it is. Uh, so... Let's see, lock game, uh, return if game already running, return if game, uh, hang on, return if game already running, lock game start. If there's already a game running, don't do anything. If there's not a game running, uh, then we're going to lock the game start, announce, announce game. Uh, if game, uh, if game already running, lock game. Hang on, I'm gonna get these states written down. Uh, hey, Snakehead, welcome. Thank you for very much for that uh, follow there. Uh, let me just do this. This is not where I want these booleans to live, but this is gonna let me um, start just writing the logic. Game open. Game open for joining. So if the game is already running, 
and I am going to change these names, and these need to be static. I guess the game, uh, why did this get created static? Did it need to be? Ooh. Because it can't call it if it's like that. What if I did this? Can I get away with that? No? <laughs> Coated beard, yes, that would explain the lag. That would explain the lag indeed. Okay, alright, alright, you win, thing. You win. Um, okay, I guess it's going to be this way. You win. Uh, pork rind, hey, welcome. Uh, I think a lot of people have horrible JavaScript issues every day. Uh, we love JavaScript, but, uh, oh man, when you run into JavaScript problems, do you run into a problem? Game running. Uh, and actually, I'm going to rename it now rather than later, because we are just going to extract that to the place where it really goes, and we're going to call this is game open for joining and this is just going to do a return so if the game is already running uh, we are just bailing on that you cannot do anything if the game is already running if the game is not running uh, then we want to do some kind of locking uh, so uh, uh, static object uh, what do I want to call this thing uh, Draco, what's the meaning of, of this? This is how you access the class that you're in. So in that case, it would access an instance of the game scheduler that we were in. How did this ever work? Who uses repeating callback action? Does anyone? This is the only one. No one's using this? Well, no wonder that's given me so much trouble. Um, in that case, we're not going to be a re repeating callback action because it's not buying us anything right now. Uh, is the time to run invoke is done. Sounds good. Uh, is done equals false. That will always be false, and we'll never do anything with it. Invoke is actually just going to call open game if needed. So that is only here to rename essentially to the other method. So if an interface requires you to have a worthless method like an invoke or something like that, which to be fair, it's mine, but I need it to be generic because the interface is really just an interval action. So that's the method getting invoked. Don't use that method except to call it. Make sure that your code uses a real name. So yeah, this is an extra call, but it's pretty easy. <laughs> Uh, yes, how did this ever work? Every developer ever. It, yes, so everyone here, especially if you're a new developer or anyone who has uh, imposter syndrome of any kind, seriously, we all say that the how did this ever work? And then it's great when you find out it never did. Uh, so it's just that this I had created because um, I, I yag need this. I will, I, will, I will be truthful in that I yag need it. Um, which, if you don't know what Yagni is, that basically it's, Yagni stands for, uh, usually people say you ain't gonna need it, but it's, you know, you, you aren't gonna need it. <laughs> but the test is passed. Uh, Will, they actually do. That's the sad part. Um, because the repeating callback action works as long as you create one that could be static. So you can, you can do this. This piece can work. Um, anyway. 
Hang on, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, is it time to run? It's gonna be that. Next run time. And I'm gonna probably nuke this repeating callback action because nothing's using it. Derp. There we go. Uh, next run time. We're gonna go ahead and put this up at the top. Although maybe I should make a section for the interval actions. That's gonna be that. Interval in seconds. Uh, we can totally keep one of those. Set it to five for now. Um, anything else I need to steal out of there? Nope. Okay. Uh, when you run it, actually, we need to set the new time to run to the next uh, run time. So it did this at the end of its invoke, which I should do at the end of open game if needed, but I don't actually want to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to do that. So this, so invoke understands that it's part of this repeating callback. Uh, have I used Hangfire? Eckstein, yes, we used to use uh, Hangfire, we thought it was overkill. Um, and uh, we, we, we got rid of it. it. It actually gave us a couple of problems. It did not work well with what we were trying to do, so... Um, so we tossed it. I will admit that. But we did give it a try for a couple of weeks. Game open for joining. Uh, so, so now this is uh, an interval action. Game, uh, the game scheduler will now need its own um, testing for this. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and yes, we do try to use uh, TDD here where we can. The one place where we're not yet. Uh, and I, I will take responsibility on this one fully. Uh, I have not set up our JavaScript testing framework yet, and we really, really need to here on the project. Um, so I will make sure that we get that soon because we are going to need it. Uh, so this is the wasteful module. And wasteful module folder. This is going to be the game scheduler. Tests. In here, we are going to say Is it time to run? Should, yeah. So I'm just going to steal this one because I have a feeling these are pretty much the same. I just want to make sure this isn't busted. Uh, can I... No, I'm not going to use that. That's hideous. Yuck. I don't even want to look at that. I'm going to replace that one with this one. Uh... It's time to run should. Fact. So we are using XUnit for this project, so if you have not seen XUnit, the way that it works is that um, when you're inside of a class, you can add a method attribute, uh, in this case fact, to any given method that you've got. Uh, if you name, if you give an attribute of fact to a method, XUnit is going to treat that as a test. So you'll notice that my uh, tooling here has already popped in and said, hey, yep, that's a test. Um, it is probably going to fail to run this because it's not going to be able to build the project. Uh, but we'll find out. Oh, it, it did build the project. Fantastic. A successfully passing test right there. Test one. No code. So that we expect to have pass. Now, let's assert um, equal true false. I can type, I promise. Almost, it's underlining that almost like it knows that that code doesn't work. 
Uh, Janisku, fighting with simple issues is frustrating. Okay. Uh, man, 45,000, welcome, thank you for following. Um, okay, so this test can fail. Confirmed. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Is it time to run should? What do we want to say about this? Um, re return false when created. when created. So we'll create a new object and immediately check it and it will be false. So we're going to create a new game scheduler. that result and I will uh, say result should be false there we go right off the bat you create one of these you immediately check it we are gonna end up with result should be false um, obviously since I wrote the other code already it is going to probably pass to begin with but all I have to do to make sure that that is the case is uh, Make sure that it actually can fail. Set the interval to zero. Then I think it'll fail. We'll find out. That may not be enough time, because if I did a greater than... We'll see. It should fail. Let's hope it can fail. It fails. Fantastic. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Love it. All right, confirmed that test can fail uh, if we do not uh, set the initial, the first run to be in the future. Okay, uh, you end a grid to CSS content and don't render, but sidebar does. Uh, yeah, Jadisku is always always a challenge to track down CSS issues. Uh, Snakehead, that is a great question. Why do I use C Sharp? Uh, I like the language. I think it's a uh, it is so it is a good language and one of the things I like about it is that um, it has a familiar syntax for a lot of developers so there are a lot of people out there that can read and work with C sharp whereas when you use some of the the uh, as, as Mihai there mentions uh, C sharp is a hybrid uh, exactly as Will says why would I use anything else um, C sharp is a very versatile language that can be used for a lot of stuff it is a general purpose language so you can use it for applications you can use it for web development you can use it for gaming uh, you know if you want to use Xamarin you can use it for mobile there's a lot of stuff that you can do with C sharp um, it's a very good language it's getting a lot of it it gets a lot of love from the team that maintains it so that's one of the nice things that I like about C sharp um, I don't always agree with every feature they put in, I don't always agree with the direction they take on everything, but I think overall the changes that they try to make to the language are good, and it does get a lot of improvement over time. Uh, C Sharp today is much better than C Sharp was um, even uh, you know, a few years ago. So that is one of the reasons why I use C Sharp. Uh, C Sharp uh, Snakehead, you know Java, uh, yeah, so Java's similar to C Sharp, and they are trying to make a lot of the same kinds of changes that C Sharp did. Uh, so both of the languages are trying to uh, make a lot of improvements and uh, make some good direction there. Uh, but Java is another general purpose language, so they're pretty similar. Um, return true um, after uh, first interval. Uh, we'll say after interval. Okay, let's figure this out. How is it determining this? So we did date time UTC now. Do I have any shims in this project? And should I? Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, as, as Will mentions, I do know a lot of people that dislike the way that Java handles their exceptions, but um, th there's preference to that. I, I'm also not a fan of it, but 
I don't want to. I don't want to just bash a language over over uh, some design differences. Uh, Java is too slow in its development. Uh, yes, Mihai, that is actually. Um, I will agree with that one. Um, Java as a language has not um, progressed as quickly and effectively as C Sharp has over over the years. Uh, there are a couple of things internally in it uh, that I still don't like the way that they implemented. Specifically, how they implemented generics is not something I'm a fan of. Um, but that doesn't mean that developers can't make great applications with Java. Uh, Q, hey, sorry about that. <laughs> C-sharp over Java, ask.com toolbar. <laughs> yeah, Q, sorry, uh, yeah, it blocks all links, so. Uh, Dark, hey, welcome. Okay, so... We want to say we need to wait the interval. Now, the the naive approach. We're not going to do this naive approach for anybody that is here and is wondering. Uh, <laughs> the easy way to do this would be to do a thread dot sleep. No, we're not going to do this in the test. But literally, if we did this, as long as you're willing to wait five seconds for a test to complete, uh, I happen to know that that's going to work. And we could grab the very like we could grab the variable and do that, right? Uh, what did this do? Did it yell at us because we tried to sleep? Found expected to be true, but found false. Uh, really? Did it actually? Oh, right. Derp. Uh, derp. I derped that one. Uh, you learned Java, Python, and JavaScript. That's actually a good set of languages. I like JavaScript. I like C sharp. Uh, as I said, I, I like Python. I used to use it. Okay, so there we go. We're not we're not doing this way, but this proves that that would work. That's not how we're going to test this though. So I just wanted to illustrate to you why. Uh, the date time use that we have in there is a dependency and it is a problem is that we would have to put in a thread dot sleep in order to wait for that to happen we don't want to do that so we get two options we can either try to shim in this project which reminds me do we still have that NuGet package that allows us to shim in here nope Do that. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Dot net core. Uh, unit test shim. This is the one we were using before. So we used this one before. I'm gonna have a good answer for us here. I'm looking for a shimming framework. Um, oh, Dark Eckhots, that's uh, that's awesome. You C sharp in your university, that's really good. Uh, yeah, MS Fakes doesn't have support in .NET Core. Yeah. What did they say about this? Are they not going to do this? On the roadmap. Awesome, guys. Awesome. Okay, I'm glad that they are at least talking about it. Uh, VH Dunpole, uh, I will explain. Here's the basic concept. Um, what I would do is I would say, um, essentially, this is how it would work. So start shim context right here. And we'll, we'll pretend that this is code, uh, just so I can illustrate how it works. And, you know, then end shim context here. And what that does, so like, when I start up my shim here and I run code inside of the shimming context here, what this lets me do is um, I can uh, if you know what a shim is in like the real world what a shim usually is is you usually use that for like you kind of like insert it in between two things 
Uh, so the idea is um, I can essentially mock out uh, static uh, methods here using a shim. So that's the idea. Is I can mock static methods, which means I could say that within this context, all calls to date time dot now return back the value I specify. So that's the idea. Uh, Snakehead, uh, I stream four times a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. You can find the schedule by using the schedule command and typing in the place where you live. So, for example, uh, if you lived in, uh, we'll say, Seattle, you could say schedule Seattle, and why did the commands not, why are the commands not working? Did I actually kill the bot when I was messing with it? Uh, I was messing with the bot, uh, all that rebuilding I did uh, sometimes borks the bot, so I'm going to let it restart here. Uh, but that's the idea with a shim. Uh, you can also find the schedule for the stream down below the video here. Oh, son of a! No, it's just delayed. That's hilarious. It just responded with the schedule while it's dying. That is funny. Yeah, I said I stream. I didn't say ice cream. Uh, Snakehead, I just killed the bot. <laughs> it is not going to give you that. And uh, you can't put a space between the exclamation point and the uh, schedule. I'm assuming you typed on a mobile device and it probably added that space for you out of convenience which was not convenient for you. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do this the simple way because I don't currently have uh, a shimming framework until Microsoft gets us that. Uh, I don't remember why I pulled out the third party one, but I did since it's not here. So that means I pulled it out for some reason and since I don't remember what that reason was, I'm not gonna bring that back in. Uh, so, First off, I'll restart the bot snakehead so that you can ask it for the schedule in Brussels. Okay. Uh, so I clock. I'm gonna use that one. We're gonna call that clock. I am going to save that as a field. When I'm over here in the is it time to run, I'm gonna say new fake clock. there there we go okay so we're gonna insert in a fake clock and actually ah see schedule Brussels worked ice cream four times a week isn't bad though uh, no will it's not uh, dark you have a noob question no problem uh, we welcome those here What's my favorite setup spec for programming languages? Uh, so I generally like to use ASP.NET Core with C Sharp and JavaScript. Um, so I do like C Sharp, I do like JavaScript. Uh, if Blazor comes around and is nice, I might use it. Um, hey, Snakehead, thank you very much for the sub. <laughs> Uh, much appreciated. Welcome to the Dev Chatter Chatosaurus crew. Please make sure you spam some hype in that chat, everyone, as we have a new sub. And actually, now that I think about it, we need to spam some extra chat because uh, Mike Eaton uh, resubbed today with two two month resub. So let's spam some of those in there. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Coded Beard. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what we need to do, so I'm passing in a fake clock, <laughs> alright, and uh, then what I want to do is, we check the time, we say, is it time to run, and then what we need to do is, I need, well, uh, sorry, we create it, and then we need time to pass, and then we need to check if it's time to run. Add seconds scheduler dot actually why don't I just do this <laughs> I 
We're going to set the time equal to the next runtime according to the thing itself. Uh, so there we go. Um, return true at next runtime. So there we go. That, that's a super cheaty way to do that. How does fake clock work? I don't remember. It just initially sets those values. Okay, cool. Okay, so the fake clock is going to have the initial value. We're then going to set it to the next runtime value, whatever that is. And then that'll be its current time. We're going to ask if it's time to run. And then we expect that to be true. Let's go ahead, run a test. We'll see what we get. Assuming this all works, we can start up our joining window. So we're going to have a window of time. How much was it off by? Was I off by a second? Fraction, I bet we're off by a fraction of a second or something. Or it's a greater than instead of a greater than or equal to. One of those, we're probably off by very little time. So let's take a look. We're going to do a quick debug and just see what it is. Yep, it's a greater than. So UTC now and next runtime are the same. Uh, we're going to allow it to be equal. Because we said that is the next runtime, not when, you know... So equal to will be allowed. So there we go. Greater than or equal to. That's certainly what the names implied. True, but found false. What? Lies. Lies. Oh, wait, hang on. No, that's not lies at all. That's totally correct. Oh, there we go. Clock, clock, clock. helps when you use the clock that you pass in. But that's what the tests are there for. They make sure that I don't miss that stuff. That's why we do it. Perfect. There we go. So return true after the interval. Fantastic. Now let's actually do the real code for this. Uh, so we're going to say, if the game is running, uh, return. Uh, I was thinking that we needed a lock for this, so we're going to take a look at that. Let me get the testing out of the way, just so that we can see this code a little bit better. Um, since I don't turn that bit on yet, uh, I don't want to try running it yet. Now I happen to know that the way that I can test the open game if needed is by calling invoke. Uh, so we're going to call that. Uh, oh! That is awesome, uh, Snakehead! That is really cool that you're uh, making one of those. Our game is actually all written in JavaScript, not in C Sharp. Um, this is like almost the facilitator for the game. So our game runs in the overlay, so it'll appear next to me. I don't have it. I don't think I have the. Uh, I don't think I have the overlay turned on right now. But let me let me confirm that. I said that earlier, but didn't actually confirm. Let's find out. Nope, overlay's on. There it is. See? That's our overlay. It's up there. Someone could technically play this game right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so first things first. We need to make a couple of quick tests for this. Get rid of that threading piece. We don't need that. Let's go back in here. We're going to make... called open game if needed should fact public void do something uh, given something um, actually we might go the other way <laughs> I said do something, uh, which is mostly a joke. Uh, do I have a way? Of, no, I don't have a way of making sure the game is already running. Um, unless we're passing in the game state somehow. Maybe this is just what calls that.
I'm changing what I'm doing. We're going a different way, everybody. We're going a different way. Ludini, uh, welcome. Thank you for that follow. Much appreciated. I'm in an action system. We're gonna make a new thing in here. We're gonna make new uh, repeating callback action. The action is going to be open game if needed. And the interval is going to be underscore interval in seconds. Actually, I'm going to make this underscore action right there. Hey, Code Air, welcome. Okay. Uh, so when this starts up, all it's going to do is automated action system, add action, action. So we're going to add in a repeating callback action immediately, which means I don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need these, there we go, that's much better. Now it's composed instead. Co develops. Say hey, welcome. I should say welcome back. You have definitely been here before. Do I ever want this to turn off? I guess I could remove it from the automated action system while we're running so it doesn't get called so frequently, and then re-add it later. We could do that. It's a little bit of complexity, but not much. Um, either way, we'll try that. So open game if needed should. Now I want to test this method. Um, I have a couple of options for how I can test it, um, but I'm going to do this one. So instead of making these things all private, I'm going to make them protected. And I'm going to change a little bit about how it works. Um, I'm going to make a testable game scheduler. This is going to inherit from game scheduler. Uh, Co, um, how much of the C sharp stuff have you missed? You saw, uh, oh, starting a new series. Oh, Co, Co, you are talking about, uh, Co is talking about something really cool that I should tell everybody here about, uh, and that is, um, I, I do not have all the episodes scheduled. I, I need to work on that. Um, we've had one episode so far of our Learn to Code in C-Sharp series. So if anyone in here is a beginner in C-Sharp or wants to learn more about C-Sharp or knows someone that wants to start out coding uh, or is just a beginning programmer, uh, and yes, even if all you've been doing is like basic Hello World stuff and you're just checking in because you're interested in those sorts of things, uh, yes, you're a beginner and you are welcome to uh, join us on our Learn to Code in C-Sharp series. And that uh, link that I put in the chat there will take you to this page right here where last week we had episode one of our uh, Learn to Code in C Sharp series. Uh, so I, I should say Learn, Learn to Code in C Sharp Core episode one. Uh, it is actually the sec seventh episode of the series. 
Uh, but we rebooted, so I still wanted the old alerts and reminders to work. So anybody that had watched before would still get them. Uh, so I might rename the events uh, to something else. We'll see. So, uh, and by seventh episode, I mean it's the eight, eighth episode. So seventh episode was back here. So learn to code in C Sharp Core episode one. It was really good. We had a lot of people here. It was really fun. Uh, I actually brought along a beginner programmer uh, for this. And um, essentially what we did is I, uh, you know, taught him and everybody else in the chat at the same time how to code in C Sharp. So we started out with some basic stuff. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to see what we did, uh, take a look at the uh, watch. You can watch this video here. Uh, you can also find it in the video section here on uh, Twitch, and uh, if you want to get reminders of our Learn to Code series, uh, you can just click Remind Me, and the link over there in the chat works for uh, sending people to this event, uh, but I will be announcing it and things like that, so if you follow me on Twitter, uh, or if you follow Dev Chatter on Twitter, both of them are going to be tweeting stuff about it uh, as we do those, and best way to get information about the stream is to join our Discord. Uh, all these links, by the way, are over there in the chat, and they're also down below the stream as well. Uh, so you can find all that stuff there. Uh, does the... Uh, yes, Snakehead. That colon means uh, essentially extends. Uh, we, we use that for um, both inheritance as well as implementing interfaces. Uh, so essentially that means that this is going to extend that. It's going to inherit from it. Uh... I am going to guess, uh, is it Kindogrek? Kindogrek? Uh, but welcome, hey. Uh, I don't, I don't know which one, is it, you let me know and I'll try to say it better the next time, but welcome. Glad you are here. The first way, Kindogrek. Awesome. So I, I did, I did guess correctly the first time. Yeah, you probably noticed I slowed down for a second there. I was like, I'm like, wait, hang on a second. Let me, get, gotta, gotta order my guesses, come up with which ones I want to go with. Okay, so here's what I want to do. For our uh, scheduling tests, for this, I want to use the testable one. So we're going to make new testable, testable game scheduler. And it needs a fake action system. Uh, we'll call that scheduler. Scheduler dot. Almost forgot the whole point of doing this. Um, uh, what's the method called again? Public void. Base that. Okay, um, this will be call open game if needed. Scheduler call open game if needed. And there we go. Uh, Snakehead, glad you're enjoying the stream. Uh, take care. We'll see you next time. And thank you for that sub, by the way. Oh, Kindo. Ah, oh. <laughs> using dev chatter bot core modules. Uh, yeah, it was not a link. Nightbot is dumb sometimes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the funny thing, uh, there's probably a lot of people in here that uh, when I pronounce your name, maybe I get it right, maybe I don't. I will tell you, it's really hard because we get people coming in here from all around the world and it is difficult to know. Um, uh, I guess what even what language any name is from, and you got to figure out. It's like, wait a minute, are those like those words? <laughs> yes, a link is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, that's actually true. If someone owned like, you know, bot modules, the top level domain, that suddenly becomes a link. That's why determining what is and isn't a link is so difficult. So okay, so call open game if needed. Do nothing given. Um, 
game is running. So let's do this. Uh, is game running equals true. Whoops. Um, right now, that's about all we need. Oh! <laughs> hey, it didn't, it didn't think that was a link. There you go. <clears throat> is there an API call to see if Twitch will treat something as a link? Well, Will, uh, the challenge is Twitch even thinks things are linked differently than what Nightbot does. Uh, so there's not a great not a great way for that one. Cause it because Twitch actually on my end thinks that this is not a link is a link. Okay, uh, so I'm running so Should do nothing uh, when game is running. That test isn't going to do much right now. Um, the best way to make that test have any meaning is to say when it does something. Um, we need to open up a window for joining. Um, so how do we do that? Um, No, uh, announce game open uh, when game not running. Announce game open. Hang on. Can I just call the actions in the action system? I think that's how I do it. <laughs> yes, uh, you, you have 104 tokens. Congratulations. If you create a class-based state machine, Class per state, I think the code would be more simple and testable. Will, I think you're probably right. Um, I think we need to go that that route. Um, uh, let's see. Game states. Whoops, not class. Why would I want class one? Seriously. Come on. Why would I want that? Thanks, thing. All right, class. Uh, what do we want to call this one? This is... Um, uh, it is better than class zero. Uh, game open. Open game. Open game. We have open game, we have um, running game. And what do we want as the other one? When it's not a game, um, between games. Because I kind of I don't want to really say end game because there's no difference between end game and next game starting. Um, we're kind of just in that mode of like we're between games. Game states between games, open game, running game. Okay, running game has some data about it. Yep. 
it has <laughs> yeah limbo exactly it has a survivor I was about to say a chat user but it really has a survivor um, An open game has a list of chat users, which I'm not going to use the chat user collection. I am going to use a list of chat users. We're going to call it um, Entrance. So these are the people that are trying to enter the game. Between games. Um, Next uh, start time. So, um, uh, let's see, next start time. What do I want to do with this? This is... I made string because I don't really want to do this. So this is game type. So we have game type. So now let's do this. Uh, see info. Um... Entrance. Go. And then between games. Sorry, I see I see blinking in chat. I will take a look at that in a second, everybody. Sorry, just trying to brain for a second. And run that. Okay. Uh, okay, hang on a second. What's uh, what's going on? Uh, it's better than class zero. I saw that already. Limbo. I saw that already. Uh, wouldn't you want to put the properties in a central context class? Um, I, did I call I called it state info, not states. Uh, you wouldn't want any outer code to know about per state data. And this get, can get passed around. Um, and this should be game state info. Which, yeah, that's basically a, a context. Uh, oh, that was great. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think I do want to have the word game in there. Game state info. And then this can get passed to these. Um... You should those. Uh, they'll probably they'll need to be there anyway. Um, okay, I don't know whether this is going to be an abstract class or an interface. I think it's probably going to be an abstract class. Um, but we'll find out. You know what? I'm going to do. We're going to do interface to begin with. I'm going to do I game state for now, and I'm probably going to regret this and at some point very soon switch this into a, um, 
<laughs> switch this into an abstract class. Uh, but we'll see how long it lasts as an interface. I want it to be known that these are the various game states. So we could be in running the game. Uh, we could be in open game. And we could be in between games. <laughs> in between games. There we go. In between games. Uh, you hear music. Uh, there should be background music. Can you guys not hear the background music? I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, it just depends on whether or not I'm going to run into the point where I very quickly need to um, uh, share some code between them. Oh, it was an in sync joke. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, is that Chase? Uh, I totally missed that name. Uh, but welcome either way. Thanks for following. Uh, Chase for the win. Uh, yes, welcome. Thank you for that follow. Greatly appreciated. Hopefully that means you're enjoying the stream and, uh, want to help out with the con with the uh the um well want to help out with the game in some way too okay so when the game is running um okay so this is when uh this is when we should be listening for uh commands given by the Survivor user. Um, this is when the join command should allow users to uh, join the game as entrance. Between games. Uh, we're in, <laughs> I like it, limbo uh, until the time of the next game. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Will, that's a, that's usually what I do with a lot of stuff. Um, the, the question is whether the... Um, so, yeah, if you make a... Uh, a base state class that they were all going to use then you can basically start there and then figure out the interface afterwards and it's pretty much the same thing everything's gonna use the interface it's just whether I was like are these gonna be all really really similar or not and I don't think they're gonna be that similar because I think there will be a significant difference um, Uh, wait, what are you talking about? Uh, me, hi, TV. Uh, your namespace will be written on two lines to be entirely visible. Oh, it's not that bad yet, but, but yeah. Um, you are right. Uh, something I want to do, uh, actually with this project we've been doing is I kinda wanna pull this one out into its own uh, folder. So let me go ahead and do this right now while I'm thinking about it. Hopefully no one's making any changes to our code base right now. Um, we're gonna do this folder. We're gonna make a folder for the game. Uh, and the only reason I'm putting it in a folder is because I want it to be obvious that it is that it is a separate piece. Uh, this is going to be a net standard library. I think we're going to start with net standard. We might be able to switch it. We, we might have to switch it to net core at some point. Um, uh, we'll say devchanner.bot.module. Call it wasteful game. So we're gonna move all this code. Um, are you using a third-party source control tool to use Git? Uh, Mihai TV depends on what you mean by third-party. 
Um, I am using a first party uh, source control tool to use GitHub. Uh, hey Rubix, welcome. Uh, this is GitHub Desktop, so this is from GitHub. Uh, and since GitHub is now Microsoft, it's really hard to argue that as third party. <laughs> as I'm using Microsoft Languages tools, uh, including GitHub Desktop, which they now own. So there we go. Uh, and Rubix, uh, welcome. Uh, you just said hello and aloha in the same word. Very nice. Good job, Rubix. That takes some talent. Okay, let's go ahead and move this. Uh, code from here. This is going to be a big change, so... Let's watch as it breaks. Uh, Will! <laughs> How did you miss that? That happened so long ago, it's actually been finalized. Like, they are together now. Uh, yeah, they bought... <laughs> they did that a while ago. Um, oh, you, yeah, so you used the built-in uh, VS source control there, Mi uh, Mihai. Um, yeah, it was it was a while back. And Rubix, I do use the command line for Git. Um, <laughs> as Will puts his head back under a rock. There you go. Uh, you pretty much need your head under a rock to have missed that one. Uh, that was like, geez, like every, every like open source person I know started going, well, it's time to move all my code to GitLab. And <laughs> I'm just like, you really think that makes that that big a difference? We'll find out. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Uh, but I, I don't generally, you know, call for the end of the world every time uh, something happens somewhere. Ooh, if I do this, I need a separate. Uh, ooh, I need to separate this if I go this route. That's a great question. What do I do with this? If I pull that out. I want this to be able to come in separately from everything else. I don't want you to have to run this part. Uh, let's see, Microsoft already was the top contributor on GitHub. That's true, I, uh, Q. That's true. I don't see what could go worse. Microsoft integrating GitHub into VS. Uh... <laughs> hey, Jesse. Welcome. Alright. Um, I need to figure out that piece then. Let's comment this out for now. So, I'm commenting that out because that piece is going to break. Uh, because we do need that. Uh, the unit testing, we need separate unit testing for that project if we're going to do that. We were tossing that anyway, so that's fine. Uh, nothing like making significant changes, huh? Okay, so our hub doesn't it doesn't know about our hub if we go this route. We would have to include the web inter inter infrastructure in that project, which actually I'm okay with. I think. Oh, it's going to be a .NET Core project. It's not going to be a, um, I just realized what's going to happen. This is no longer net standard, I bet. Because I don't think it can be. Right? Because this one can't be either. Yep, .NET Core app. Bummer. Told you, I wasn't sure how long that was gonna last at all. And turns out, it doesn't last very long. 
Okay, so we're going to move this hub over into this one. Folder, hubs. In case there's more than one, we're going to put it there. Okay. Uh, and I apologize about sending the bot back in there a couple of times, everybody. I am messing with stuff, and the problem is as I mess with stuff in the bot, it tries to rebuild itself, uh, and that's actually why it's spamming the chat there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just kill it, because uh, as I make these structural changes, it's going to be like, oh, I need to restart. You changed structural stuff in the app. So, so there's what we're going to do. Uh... Wasteful. Wait, why is this one complaining? That shouldn't be in there. How did that get in there? That's weird. Move you to your new namespace here. Move you to your new namespace. Get this one in the new namespace. These commands are gonna break, by the way. Uh, and the reason why is that um, we have some data in the database. So I'm gonna change that, and that ought to fix things. once I change the data. Scheduler. There we go. Fix these namespaces by doing a quick one of these. We will do a quick find and replace on that with whatever this new name is. What the? How did that get on my clipboard? This turns out it wasn't any faster. Thought it would be. I was wrong. Okay, there we go. So that should have gotten those ones. There we go. And for the model, Quick little change on those. And on that. There we go. Okay. We're no longer using that. Okay, let's fix up all these usings. Okay. So now we're left with this, which has a little bit of a complaint because we yanked out the data because all of our all of our data for this is over in the wasteful game project and i do not want infrastructure ef referencing that so we're gonna have to come up with a creative way of making that work um then i'm not sure how we're gonna do that one it's gonna require a little bit of a little bit of thinking on that how we want to store this data uh because we have a few options You'll notice with all this all this code that we've pulled into this 
uh, project here that this did merit its own uh, CS Proj file here. So I am in favor of that for now, uh, but I think what I'm going to do temporarily to make this work is just add the dependency. So I'm going to add the project reference from this to... I don't want to make that project reference. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. Nope, not going to do it. Coding Karma, hey, welcome. Um, we need to go another route. I need another way of accessing data. Yeah, I know, Will. I cannot, cannot call that that way. It just doesn't work. Um, yeah, resistance is futile, as we, as we find out very quickly. Um, uh, EF core data context classes. I'm just wondering if someone's going to be like, this is, you know, um, I'm expecting this to be basically a horror story to to want to go this route. Um, I don't want to go this route, it scares me. Uh, okay. So if I keep its data entirely separate and make the wasteful database be a separate database, then that should be fine. Minxie Rose, hey, welcome. And Gareth, hi, how are you? Uh, yes, typing is failing all of us tonight. Today, whatever it is. Uh, open the package manager and run the two lines above. Uh, <laughs> Hello, latecomers. Thanks, Will. Twenty thirty-seven. That's uh, what, like, five hours ahead of me. So you are in uh, GMT, I would say, very likely. Okay. Um. So I don't want to do anything all that weird. Um, let's make a new database. We're gonna put we're gonna put wasteful in its own database. We're gonna have the separate module be its own separate stuff. Um, actually, yes, exactly. Uh, you switched to GMT a little over a week ago because I just switched off of EDT into e, uh, into EST again. Uh, yeah, that, that's true, Will. Uh, luckily, we were all he here to discover that it is, in fact, 42. Um, but no one else will know why, but we, we figured that out here on the stream. Sadly, there's no recording of it. What do I use for the graphics layer? Uh, we're just using uh, some, um, uh, some ping, some PNG uh, pixel art that I did. So a little 42 by 42... Uh, pixel images. I will give you an example. So that that's what our character looks like. Is that little dude? We've got stuff like baseball bats that he can pick up. Uh, we are using vanilla JS, Gareth. Um, how do I keep my viewers engaged? Well, I pretty much just work on code and talk to them. Generally, if you don't treat people like idiots, uh, and you, you assume that the developers watching your stream are pretty smart and follow along and get what you're doing, uh, talk to them. Uh, and yes, showing off your cat is a really, really good trick, as Will mentions. See in here? Cat's not even in here right now. I can't. I can't show off the cat. Okay, so that's the bot. 
So let's do this. App settings JSON. This is not database connection string. Uh, this will be wasteful game connection string. Wasteful game db I guess we could just call it wasteful game uh, we'll connect to our local local db like that a trusted connection How do you grow your stream? I don't have a cat to show. Oh, oh man, yeah. Uh, Gareth, that's that's a tough one. You, you need to get a cat. You gotta get a cat. Uh, also, don't commit Twitch suicide and play God at TwitchCon. I don't know what that means, Minxie Rose. Uh, yeah, Code and Karma, we have a cat that sometimes makes it onto the stream. Uh... Oh, yes, yes. As Coding Karma mentions, you can have a cute doggo also. You need a dog or a cat if you're going to be a Twitch streamer. If you want to if you wanna go pro on your Twitch stream, and that's the way you do it. Okay, so... For now, we're going to add that project dependency here. I'm okay with this one having it, as long as we don't actually depend on anything other than like right here saying, yeah, include this thing. So we're going to use this for startup only because I don't want to have that use loose a startup. So there we go. So there's wasteful hub getting created and then uh, it's other codes getting loaded into memory as well. Uh, Minxie Rose, uh, the bot will yell at you if you post a YouTube link, but people are welcome to post YouTube links over in the Discord as long as they are relevant stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and get my bot running, because it's not. Uh, it might not want to start, because we're in the middle of making some significant changes, and it doesn't want to start, because we're in the middle of making some significant changes. Um... That is not wanting to do what I wanted to do. That's not the namespace for that. You know what? I'm just going to nuke the Teams page. Uh, there we go. Goodbye. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Any cute animals and owls, really? I found the Twitch streamers with the cutest ferret one. <laughs> Uh, you have two dogs, Riker and Crusher. I wonder where you got those names from, Will. I have no idea where you got those. Uh, what would you recommend for streamers that are now starting IT-related streams? Um, I would recommend uh, get some consistency and make sure that you are engaging your viewers and talking about stuff, Whether no matter how many people are in the chat. does not matter. Uh, Will, I, I knew I knew where they were from. You you don't need to give me hints. Um, you know, uh, you, you're you, clearly you are named after Will Riker. Um, clearly. Uh, at which point Will's gonna be like, you know, I'm too old to be named after Will Riker, which is probably true. Did I, did the bot, did I start the bot? Did I, hang on. Maybe I just built, I'm not sure. We're about to find out if I built, if I started the bot or not. Uh, should say hi in the chat. Hmm. 
Mm. Uh, when I when I say stay consistent, um, what I actually mean is get a consistent schedule. So, um, if you set up your schedule that you're going to stream, you know, say three times a week, uh, say you're going to stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. <clears throat> I mean make sure that you're making most of those. Don't, like, cancel half of them. Um, if, if you do need to cancel them, that's fine. Uh, but, because stuff comes up. For example, I actually canceled our Saturday stream. But you want to make sure that you're, you know, pretty consistent. Uh, Alright, so what is this DB exception update? So, I was messing with the database, so... Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, I told you the change in the namespace was going to mess things up. This is it messing things up. Uh, so let me go ahead and fix that. Tables, command words, view data. Okay, we jump back here, and we get the worst interface that has ever been created. Because nothing like black on dark gray. Truly brilliant color selection there from Microsoft. So thanks for that, guys. Okay, problem solved. There we go. <coughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, uh, Janiscu. Uh, stuff comes up. Ah, yes. You like Quill Wheaton? <clears throat> okay, bot's running again. So, as I was mentioning to people, uh... You should check out our Discord. I think I was probably linking to our Discord. I might have also been mentioning our schedule. Things like that. Um, but yes. Uh, where do you host your bot? It looks like I'm finally going to have to give in and create one. Uh, Gareth. Um, so, I am... I, I do not have my bot hosted anywhere. I just run it locally when I'm streaming. Uh, because I don't actually want to have the bot running when the stream's not going. So I just start it... Um, uh, right when we, when we start, and because I'm working on it, I do that as well. Um, um, <laughs> Ceronics, yeah, yeah, I have a life out of streaming. Oh, unfollowed, unsub, getting out of here. <laughs> uh, yep, sounds good. Oh, and uh, Gareth, uh, as I mentioned, feel free to uh, to. You know, run the dev chatter bot and uh, submit pull requests to it. Uh, I've been trying to make it, uh, over time, I've been trying to make it easier for other streamers to work on the same one. So uh, I am adding the game pieces, but I'm trying to make sure that everything I put in here uh, can be disabled. So you do not need to have it running uh, when you are, so like if you don't like the, you know, various things, you can change those. Uh, and I've been trying to make as much stuff data as possible. Uh, so hopefully we can turn it into a project that is worked on by a lot of developer streamers because I think that that would be the most useful thing is if we have a bot for developer streamers that, you know, a lot of us build together. So that's my plan. Uh, so feel free to take a look. Uh, technician, uh, welcome. Thank you for that follow. Seems you've been enjoying the stream since you did end up hitting that follow button after you've been here a little bit, a little while. Uh, was it difficult maintaining viewers when you first started? Yes. Um, when I first started streaming, one of the things a lot of people haven't had to deal with, um, so lately we've had a lot of other streamers that are, uh, friends of ours that have started streaming. And, uh, when they start up, usually what I do is I try to host them, auto-host them, other things like that, uh, give them a little bit of attention. So, uh, some people here watch Code Rush from Mark Miller. I watched his first few streams. Man, I tell you, he had as many viewers in those first few streams as I had, like, literally months in. Because uh, we were able to send him so many hosts and everything like that. When I started this stream, there were only a couple of people in the chat at any given time. So, 
Um, despite, you know, talking to all the people that I know, it's hard to get people in for this stuff. Uh, so you do what you can, uh, and you just keep you just keep chatting with everyone. That's that's the big thing. Just keep chatting. Hence, dev chatter. Uh, you decided your name for your bot. Uh, well, it's second bot. Uh, oh, Janiscu for like having in your channel. That's awesome. Also remember that some sort of familiarity with the stream to stream is good to keep viewers too. Uh, if you speak about networking algorithms one day and then <laughs> paint the next day, uh, yes, as Coding Karma mentions, uh, one of the big things is. Unless you are already really, really established, it is hard to switch genres. So if you want to do both gaming and programming, I'd recommend either doing, like, multiple channels. Uh, so I actually do have multiple channels. You guys all probably notice I've got at Brandonius right there. That's what I use on the internet. But the problem is I use that for gaming here. So I did programming and I created dev chatter as a separate thing. Uh, do you have an API to the bot so that I can hook Twitch Deck into it? Um... I don't yet, uh, Gareth, but uh, that is a an interesting idea. Um, let's chat about that in Discord. I can't see if there is an attach to Unity button. Uh, is he using Unity? Uh, Nordel, uh, no, I'm not using Unity on this project. Um, we are using uh, just straight vanilla JavaScript. Uh, yeah, Gareth. Uh, so, interestingly, the, the last thing that got me affiliate... Uh, was not uh, was, was not viewers either, uh, so I got to affiliate uh, fairly quickly, I think, um, and uh, it was actually when I got to my 50th follower was when I hit uh, affiliate. Um, one bot I have already set to developer dashboard to Twitch. Nice, Janiscu. Yeah, I need to get my bot um, like registered with Twitch at some point so that. Um, They'll expand the amount of messages and things like that can it, that, that it can send. Uh, vanilla JavaScript with <laughs> with a cherry on top. Yes, SignalR. Yes, yes. So we are running some libraries. We're, run, we're running SignalR. We're running some various other pieces as well. Uh, but when I say vanilla, I mean we're not using uh, Vue, Angular, React, or something like that. Uh, there's no you know knockout. There's no underscore. Um, that's not really what we're building our game with. So it's vanilla JS. Uh, someone like C and C++ better than C Sharp? Well, they're very different languages, to be honest. Um, they have similar names, but C, C++, and C Sharp are not used for solving the same types of problems. Uh, so if that's the, the place where, where you would rather be coding, then awesome. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, and yeah, as Fuel Snable mentions there, uh, you might like C++, but it really depends on what you need. So choose the right tool for the right job. Uh... C++ equals code, uh, maintain slow, run fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, 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 exactly. Well said, Will, well said. Uh, and that is actually one of the things, so I, I do want to learn F-sharp at one point. Um, I don't know when when that's going to be, but we are totally going to do some F-sharp streams at some point in the future. Okay. Um... Right, we were in the middle of shifting all of this stuff over. Uh, do these commands work? Is this... hang on. Do I have... Nope. Uh... Let's do this. Hang on. We are gonna test something. Nope. Didn't work. That's fine. Didn't need to work. We, we just shifted everything around. Uh, having it work right away is not expected. Okay. Uh, w wait, uh, wasteful start command. Interesting. Uh, C++ is well-ordered and syntax is best for all. C-sharp is more like Java and Java is hell of a coding language. Ah, so you don't like Java and you consider C-sharp like Java, which is kind of funny because I would actually argue that C-sharp and Java, while they look fairly similar, are actually uh, quite different in a lot of ways, although they are the same type of language. Um, and C++ is a very mature language that can be used to solve a lot of problems. Uh, so. But, as I said, teach their own. 
Okay. Um, in the startup, when we were setting this up, did we did we tell it that we wanted this thing to run? Faceful display notification, but we didn't include it in the assemblies that we added. So uh, let's do this. We're gonna manage our NuGet packages. I wanna make sure that we actually have access to um, uh, AutoFAC inside of that uh, wasteful game because we need it to be able to register itself uh, at, at runtime. So what we're gonna do is this. Uh, we are going to make a folder called startup actually startup yes okay I wanted to make sure it matched the casing that it used in uh, in the web project uh, we're gonna make a class in here called um, wasteful autofac module and yes I'm okay with it with it knowing that it's autofac because well it's going to get an autofac module now it's trying to include that for me but I have not told it specifically that it needs to put autofac in that project so we're gonna go ahead and tick that box 481 the same version so we're gonna add autofac and it's gonna let us get away with this uh, I need to go back to coding and really enjoy it. <laughs> A game has you not uh, not working on uh, on coding anymore. Well, there you go. That, that, <laughs> that'll do it for some people. So, using Autofac. Alright. Uh, we have a bunch of modules in here that we're already using. Uh, so that's the method, huh? There we go. So there we go. We can do that, and then we just do builder.whatever. Okay. Jump back down here. I want to take a look. How did I auto wire this up? You know what? Uh, so we registered them as iBot commands. Okay. Actually, this is going to be as as iBot command. as implemented interfaces register a single instance and what are the commands this is wasteful start command and this one will be wasteful move command there we go so now those are registered uh, oh <laughs> uh, Tio uh, we are, uh, so right now what I am building is this is the um, web back end of a, a stream overlay game. So we created a little roguelike using pixel art, and in that game uh, you can move around and we are giving you chat controls in order to be able to play the game. Uh, so the idea is we're going to make it so that there's a join, there's a join window, so uh, we'll announce that a new game is starting. Uh, that'll be an announcement here on the page, so we're probably going to put it up at the top in the center of the screen, just let everybody know, hey, by the way, time to join. Uh, and anyone that wants to enter can enter into the chat by just saying, like, you know, exclamation point join or something like that. We will add you to the lists of entrants that want to uh, play the game. 
and then either what we're going to do is randomly select who's going to play, uh, or maybe it'll be everybody that said they wanted uh, is going to get a round. So everybody will get to play uh, one round surviving and see how they do. So that's the basic concept. Um, and I think we're going to probably try to maintain inventory for your character uh, going forward as you attempt to survive in the zombie apocalypse. So we'll see how it works. Uh, um, so we're not doing it actually as a Twitch plugin. It's actually displaying on, on the stream directly. So it's on the video feed, uh, which means recordings of the game. So recordings of the stream are actually going to show it. Uh, but yeah, it is connected into Twitch chat, so it is sort of, in a way, extending it, even though it's not an extension, per se, uh, because that would not be in the recordings of it. Uh, I, let's see... Do, 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 the kernels are... Uh, last week or so, I've been learning Kotlin. Oh, that's awesome, Coding Karma! Do, do. Okay. Uh, so this is the setup for this piece here. So that's... That's getting these commands created. And then we don't need that. Where was the... There it is. Okay, so this comes out. This goes to live over in this module. So register the commands, register that piece. And can I pull this out? Um, that's a great question. Can I, can I extract that? Um, separate configure methods, um, can I extract this into, configuration, in, Class library. Hang on, there we go. Is that what I'm looking for? Using iConfiguration in a C Sharp class library. This might be what I'm looking to do. Anybody know how to do it? Uh, no, I don't want to add that. Um, that's not what I want. No. Let's start it. No, no. Huh. I might need to look into how to do that. That's a weird thing I'm trying to do here. Um, awesome, Tio. Glad, uh, glad the stream sounds interesting. Um, uh, in one week plus a few days, I'm gonna get home from exam of spring and a boot. Uh, probably the one, only one doing it, Kotlin. Nice, coding karma. Yeah, it is fun to be uh, to to use new and interesting things. The battle between JVM and .NET. Uh, Will, there's a current battle between JVM and .NET. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know which battle you're talking about. <laughs> Amiga versus Atari. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll leave this in here for now. This. I want to. I want to get rid of this line right here. Got to be a way to do that. Uh, let me let me hard restart the bot, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna kill the bot. Bot's gonna be totally dead. The Commodore 64 and the Nintendo 64. That was a huge battle. I cannot believe. That uh, Nintendo 64 came out on top of that one. Uh, it's almost like uh, they have nothing to do with each other. Uh, 
Uh, to be fair, though, the Nintendo 64 was a fantastic system. Lots of lots of good games for the Nintendo 64. Uh, although the Super NES was also a great system, as was the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Lots and lots of good uh, consoles in their day. Okay, so uh, this is running. Let's open up that there. No, didn't get the command. Wasteful start. Nope, not running. We're going to debug this. We'll see what we end up with. Uh, so I want the command handler. Wasteful start command. Uh, so first off, I'm going to drop a uh, breakpoint there. And second, I am going to say uh, command received. There we go. And we are going to attempt this. Wasteful start. So there we go. We got a command. And what was the text of the command? Okay, we didn't find one. What was the wasteful start? The command list did not include that command. 50 commands. That is a lot of commands. Jeez, why do I have so many commands? Oh! Oh, I know what happened. Before I create that, I need to register that module because I need to make sure that it registers at the right time to be included. This is going to be wasteful autofac module. There we go. That's what would do it. <laughs> there have been a lot of interesting computers over the years. Uh, are you using your own game engine? Uh, Farouk, uh, yeah, you could say that. Um, we, we are, uh, as I mentioned, we are coding it uh, from scratch, so we're using our own game engine. We looked at using Phaser, and then we were kind of like, you know what, all these things feel like overkill. Uh, because we're planning on doing a roguelike, and most game engines that exist are, are pretty darn overkill for a roguelike. So... <clears throat> there it is. Uh, so, this is going to get ugly. This will hurt. That guy attacks me, I come down there. Had to use my whole sword, but I made it. The zombies are dumb, by the way. Okay, so that's the basic game. Now I can, um, I can play that game with my mouse and with, with my keyboard. I click in there and then I use keyboard inputs in order to play the game. You'll notice the game actually appeared on our overlay as well because I started it the correct way. So that's actually what lets that show up. We're gonna change that so it doesn't do that in the future. 
Uh, so let me refresh and that'll be gone. So the game is not there anymore, but you'll notice the game did appear there and that's actually how it's intended to work. Um. <laughs> An unexpected error occurred while invoking game end on the server. Oh! I know what happened. It tried to save the data and it can't. So uh, we, we removed the ability for the game to save its data, so that's why it just failed. Not a problem, though. Uh, running each game as a thread. No, Coding Karma. Uh, we don't need to run the game as a thread. I mean, it sort of is because it's running in a separate browser window. Um, so there is that. But we're not going to run them separately, really. Um, because we're going to have one running at a time. So we do need to make sure there's only one going at any given moment. Uh, but we also need to create a database for storing that data. So for now, I am going to go to our game end. And I'm going to go to where this is created, which is inside of the Wasteful Hub right now. Uh, and we're not going to save it. So, comment that out right now. That will get rid of the error. Uh, but that's all that, that is going on right now. Uh, it's just that um, it fails to save because we pulled that out. So we're going to make this use a separate database uh, for the game. So this will be totally separate, so anybody that doesn't want to run it uh, just needs to have it turned off. So if you don't want the wasteful game to exist in your chat, but you do want to use our chatbot, you will be able to turn it off like that. <clears throat> okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and get this committed because it now works. Um, we got rid of that error. So this is moving Wasteful into its own class library. Benrick, Rogue. This is going to be a uh, module. Modularize. Create new branch. Branch off of Benrick Rogue. There we go. So we're going to make a new branch. And the reason being, this is a significant change. So we should have our own branch for this. So I'm going to commit this separately uh, into that branch because this is basically yanking everything out. Now the reason I had to do such a big commit is because I wanted to not do a work in progress commit. I wanted to get this to actually function. Uh, so we, we had to get to that point. I don't yet have the database, but I want to get a commit before we get to that part. So I'd rather not be logging data uh, since we don't do anything with the data yet anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. So now everything's been... Wait, did I not? Hang on. Did it not switch me to the branch? I created a new branch and it didn't switch me to that? Did it not make the branch? Modularize. Did it fail to make the branch? Failed to make the branch. Why is it failing to make that branch? Alright. You, you got me, Git. You got me, GitHub. Because it's got rogue. Okay, that's fine. So we'll do that. Wish GitHub Desktop had told me why it didn't want to create my uh, my branch, or that it didn't even. Okay, so cool. Uh, welcome, somebody. Thank you for following. I didn't see who that was, but I will check as soon as uh, I am able. Uh, but if anybody else is in here and hasn't clicked that follow button yet, please make sure that you do so. Uh, looks like Chumbleton. 
Chumbleton, welcome. Thank you for that follow. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> yep, yep. Thank you, thank you. Sorry about that. Didn't have the view open to be able to see who it was that had followed right away because I was typing when that uh, came up. But always appreciated. Uh, let me go ahead and get out of there because we don't need it anymore. Uh, oh, awesome. Jumbleton, glad, glad to hear it. Hopefully you'll learn something. Uh, keep in mind anybody that is in here and is interested in learning uh, C Sharp, so if you are a beginner programmer or you know anybody that is, uh, make sure to check out that link I just posted in chat there. We do a series here on the stream where we teach uh, beginning developers how to code in C Sharp. People are welcome to uh, show up, follow along. Uh, everything is basically follow along type coding exercises. It's quite fun. And, <laughs> and thank you everybody who just uh, clicked that follow button. Always appreciated. Uh, I should mention a couple of other things. All the videos we do here on all the all the streams we do here on, on Dev Chatter uh, are recorded and are in the video section here on Twitch, and they're also available on YouTube. Hello, people in the future on YouTube. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I need to figure out our new database connection. We need another database connection. So we've got that one. And uh, welcome. Uh, Antignoi, Gisp, uh, and Hairdrex. Uh, thank you very much for those follows. They all came in together. Uh, and uh, Shrimpy B. Uh, hey, you've been trying to get into web dev. Uh, complete beginner just started. I've been doing the Odin project. Do you think it's outdated or any other resources? Uh, Shrimpy, short answer is almost everything you're going to look into is outdated. Um, <laughs> that's just kind of the way it works. Um, <laughs> however, uh, that doesn't mean that it's bad to learn. Uh, the best recommendation I can give you is actually, if anything is interesting and fun to you, start there. That is actually the best way, best thing I can tell you, the best way to learn any kind of tech is to make sure that you are enjoying it, because that is what is going to get you to stick with it and make sure that you really do learn it. Uh, so always choose something that you enjoy. It sounds silly, but it is actually really important. So, um, also, uh, welcome to, uh, Tio. Uh, thank you very much for that follow. Uh, <laughs> you've been here chatting for a little while, so I'm glad you like the stream enough. And uh, I am going to guess Jin uh, Doiram, which I probably butchered horribly, and I apologize for that. Uh, my pronunciation on that probably isn't all that great, but uh, thank you for following all the same, and if you let me know, I will try to say it better next time. Uh, finally found a streamer who uses C Sharp and looks fun. Uh, Hairdrex, awesome, thank you. Glad you like the stream. Okay, so let me go ahead and take a look and see where that is used. Uh, nope. Nope. Startup. There we go. Uh, so we set up a connection to that using that. Inside of this. We are going to do this piece, folder data, and we're going to call this new class um, data game data context. I want to make it really clear that this one is a separate one. So let's open up our app data context. Okay, now I want to go up here and I want to manage the NuGet packages for the entire solution. So a lot of people don't realize that you can do that. Uh, they know you can do it project level, but it's really important to be able to do it solution level. Uh, because I can go in and I can make sure, so I can see that EF Core is actually getting included in my EF project right here. Um, and I may need that in my other project, but I think EF is getting included automatically. So let me do that and make sure that it did not make a specific reference to this. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to open up the csproj file. So the nice thing for anybody that is using uh, ASP.NET Core, so that's the current version of ASP.NET, um, when you do that, um, 
the new CS project files, we're looking at one right here, are actually really simple. So if you want to make sure that it didn't, that, that something you did didn't make a bad change, this is the best way to do it. Just open it up, take a look. There's very little going on here. So you'll see that I'm using the .NET SDK. I'm using a net core app to one. Why am I using the .NET SDK? Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I shouldn't be using the .NET core SDK, should I? That seems wrong. Um, hang on a second. I think I've got the wrong one. That's not right, is it? I thought it was, thought it was the net core SDK. Did they, did they really call it the same thing? No, they did. Okay, I'm misremembering. Uh, anyway, net core app 2.1, autofac, and Microsoft ASP.NET Core app right here. This pulls in Entity Framework Core as well as a few other things. It includes SignalR also. Um, oh, yeah, you're right, Gareth. You're right. Yes. Okay. Anyway. So now that we've got this set up, let's go ahead and steal the code that we had here. I had it commented out, right? Yes, I did right there. So we're going to take that out of here. We're going to add that into our data context over here and uncomment it. So these classes were moved into another project, and so that is why uh, we had to pull out the data recording that we were doing before. Um, I want to add in a couple of constructors kind of like this, so I'm going to steal these. Uh, and the reason we need these constructors is some of the pieces that automatically create our stuff need an empty constructor. So they need to be able to call an empty constructor, they need one to exist, and so that's what this constructor is for. It is empty. Some other times we need to be able to pass in a set of options, and that's why this one exists. So we do that down here. Uh, where did we do that? Right down here. Uh, my th yeah at this point right here. So we made a design time factory for this context. And this seems really confusing and weird. And I will, <laughs> I can explain what this is for, but it's basically when we are using uh, some of our tools that do the automatic creation of our database and automatic migrations and things like that, we use these commands. They use this to know what's going on. And this one actually isn't that one. This is the when we run the app, we need it to automatically wire this up. That's what this one is. Um, so when we don't have access to this data, it automatically creates this. Okay, uh, I saw a whole bunch of stuff happen in chat and uh, I will take a look. Uh, really straightforward stuff. Uh, yeah, so um, I would actually recommend that anybody that is interested in learning web dev, I do highly recommend you learn ASP.NET uh, Core. It's actually got some really cool stuff in it, and keep in mind that Core does include uh, all the MVC stuff that was available before. So ASP.NET Core lets you do web pages. Uh, so web pages is like a, a it's a concept in ASP.NET Core. Uh, I really like it. ASP.NET Core is lightweight. It's it's fantastic. Uh, you're in your freshman year in university, and you're studying C Sharp. You get the most of the basics down. And you don't know where to move on to. Uh, Hairdrex, pick any project. Just work on stuff. Uh, so. At work on open source projects, make your own projects, just try and do stuff. Best recommendation I can give to any student, just work on fun projects that you find interesting. Uh, it is basically what I did all through college. It is a great way to do things. Uh, I'm going to leave that for now. We're not going to get that one. We're just going to have these. There's our data context. Uh, and we'll figure that out. So we're going to need to get at the connection string. Um, what was this called? Set up database with options. So this is the one we create right off the bat when the application starts up. Over here, we're going to do that inside of our autofac module. And we'll call this um, setup game database. Uh, 
And inside of it, we'll give it that. A setup repository takes in a connection string and is going to return back an iRepository. I think. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Uh, you've had some crazy ticks for speedrunning, uh, but don't know any details. Speedrunning! Fuel Snable! You talking about gaming? Oh, I love speedrunning. It's awesome. Uh, ASP.NET Core is also fast. Look at the Tech and Power benchmark. Uh, great suggestion there, Gareth. Great suggestion. <laughs> okay. Do I make that use Core? Does this reference Core? I'm going to let this reference Core. does. Okay. Let's do a quick one of these. DB context. We don't want app DB context. We want game. Game data context. Game data context. Use SQL Server with a connection string. Grab the options from that. We're gonna make it. Make one of those. Create and ensure database method. We're gonna make data context for that. EF generic repo. Oh, uh, jeez. Do we use the same one? That's the question. Whoops. Not even a big fan of using that one for this project, just because we're so much simpler in the way we do things. So let's do this. Uh, why did I make that a class? I don't know. Create a derived type that we're going to call game repository. Maybe we'll call it EF game repository, as it's still going to be an EF one, I think. We'll move it to its own file. We'll reference that one. Let's fix this one's name. Rename file to match the type. There we go. We'll call this EF Game Repository. And it's going to take in. Well, it's still called App Data Context, but that's not going to be its name. We're just going to call it Data Context. Now, you may remember that when I was setting up our Game Data Context, I did not create that. Uh, I made an empty constructor only. So we're going to create that one, and I still want to have an empty one, because some things like to have the empty constructor, so we're going to allow you to create one with the empty constructor. So there it is, that's the empty constructor one. <clears throat> now the EF game repository does not have a constructor that takes in one of these. So it's going to take in the data context, and we are going to store this as a field that I'm going to call DB probably. So data context is not what we're going to call it. I'm just going to do underscore DB. Sure. Actually, no. Underscore 
db underscore db. So we're going to let that parameter come in with the name data context. You just had an idea for a chat game, uh, a load runner where the chat users get to bury each other, and last chatter standing, they can only be one. <coughs> I like it, Will Bennett. Quick question, what do you think of the best way of promoting yourself uh, to get a job at a popular company on a game dev software like, uh, for example, you're trying to make your own bot, but with all the necessary stuff, driver, client, supervisor, server web. Uh, do you think it would be a good portfolio to show for some companies in the future? Tio, uh, yes, I think there are a lot of companies that do like to see something in your portfolio that you have built before. Uh, so if you can point to a lot of the, um, um, if you can point to some projects that you've worked on for various companies and you can say, hey, I did this in this project, uh, I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, if, uh, if you don't have that kind of thing in your work, doing some kind of side project is always valuable. So doing side projects is super valuable for uh, future employers. So, they'll, they'll like to see that. Can C-Sharp be used for making mobile applications? Hairdrex absolutely can. Check out Xamarin. Okay. Uh, so, I want to... Want to make a couple of changes right here. Let's go to our class here, and we're going to say, first off, we're going to jump over here. And I'm, I'm tempted to get rid of this. <laughs> Compared to whatever uh, whatever iOS uses, I love it. That's funny. I want to see if I can get away with not defining that w the restrictions on that T for now, um, or if I do have to define it, I want to define a different T. Um, see what we save from this and whatever it is we're gonna extract that out as some kind of a shared class if we can okay so first things first I want to get rid of all of these in our current document get rid of all of those <clears throat> fantastic to require that that's a class. I guess I'm okay with that restriction. It will be a class.
What is this? What? Uh, hang on. Did this have a restriction? No, that doesn't have a restriction. The constraint for type T must match T's in the interface thing. Consider using explicit interface implementation instead. Oh, because these don't have the uh, where class. Yeah. Derp. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> okay. So that makes those work. Now let's get rid of the ones that are not implementing an interface, which is... Plutonin, uh, yeah. I can explain. Uh, essentially, it is, it is a, a fairly generic way of accessing your data. So, um, part of the reason that we use it is that um, I may, at some point, and I really do think this is a real possibility, I may yank out Entity Framework. Um, we are using Entity Framework. It does do its job. Uh, it's not that bad. I might want to replace it with, da uh, with Dapper, though. Wow, brain stopped working there for a second. Um, I think it is likely that we'll switch it to Dapper at some point. Uh, there are a couple of other uh, interesting benefits that you can get out of using the repository pattern the way that we are using it. Uh, and that is that our repository does not actually contain any filtering logic at all. So this is basically just a setup for allowing us to use specifications to define what data that we want to get. And that inherently is the part that I think confuses people in here. Um, because that is the only piece of complexity with how we do that. So right now, this is basically a wrapper around the data context class. You'll notice all I'm doing is just calling, you know, grab the DB set, add the item, call save changes. And, and same thing here. And that's basically all we're doing. So it's fairly simple. Uh, but what we do is we use these specifications. And that's what makes this interesting. The specification that we use allows us to define filtering logic in a class. Let's us wrap that up and reuse that anywhere in our application. So we don't have to um, write it from scratch every time. Let me go ahead and make a new folder and I'll show you as I do this. Uh, so we'll say specifications, we'll make a class and we will call this the Actually, now that I think about it, did I already have specification? I already had a specification for this, didn't I? Somewhere. Didn't I? Let me take a look. Survivor policy? Is it? Oh, model specifications! If survival policy is already there. There you go. I apparently saved this piece. Uh, I don't want this to be a data item policy anymore. Uh, because I don't want these to be data entities. So we want this to be. Just an I specification. Uh, 
of Survivor. Call it Survivor Policy. Which actually, I don't even want to do that. I want to go copy this. But I don't want it to be this one, I want it to be a different one. So this is going to be... Uh, the game data policy. Nope. This is going to be a game data policy. Not going to have a restriction on T just yet. Will be soon, though. This can't happen yet, because I don't have a where. T is... Game... Uh, game entity? Game entity. Uh, no, game... Game data. Game data? Game data? I don't know. Jeez, I'm not sure about that name, everybody. I am not sure about that name. Oof. Give these an int ID, so that is int ID equals that, so that'll be by ID, there's the criteria, there's the expressions, and include Okay. So data item policy goodbye. Survivor policy is going to be a game data policy type survivor. Ah, it wants to remove that constraint. That's because I need to do this. That needs to be game data. This is also game data. And this is game data. There we go. So now I can make a survivor policy like that. And it's a survivor policy like this, and we can grab survivors by name or by user ID, either one. And this lets us uh, essentially create a set of filters. So we now have the ability to access uh, survivors by display name and by user ID or by ID. Um, have I thought about using the managed extensibility framework uh, to enable module loading for the bot and making it so you have to build the core? Uh, yes, uh, Gareth, that is actually something that is on my list of things to look into, um, is how best to do that. So I specifically want to do something like that, and you are correct, the managed extensibility framework is a blast from the past. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if if I can make it work, sure. Uh, but we are going to use something like that because I do want to make this modular, so I want the idea to be that someone grabs the bot, and if they want to have this game in there, they can, uh, you know, include the game that way. So, yes, Gareth, if you want to... Um, <laughs> if, if you want to look into that, feel free. Um, as I said, uh, people are welcome to contribute to this bot. All of our source code is out on GitHub, and if you are a streamer or want to be and want to work on this bot to use on your own channel, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, you don't just have to be a viewer using it. Uh, we, I want to make this a really great app that a lot of people can use. Uh, so if, if you are interested, feel free to uh, hop on. So seriously, check out our Discord, because you can actually talk with me and the other developers that are here on the stream. There are a lot of us that are over there. And... Um, it is actually a really good spot to uh, discuss this kind of stuff. So if you want to work on the chatbot project, we actually have a, uh, a chat channel 
uh, inside of Discord that is about discussing the chatbot project. So if you want to do any pull requests or things like that, that's where you want to go to talk with us. Um, so if you have suggestions for uh, how we could re-architect the project, because there's a lot of changes that we could potentially make. There's a lot of ways we can improve it. it. We've been developing it organically slowly over time, which I love, because that also makes a lot of these ideas and these changes that we want to make uh, realistic and reflect workplaces better. Uh, because no project that you do at work is just developed on day, uh, you know, and like built on day one. No, uh, you add features over time and you realize, oh, we need to change this. We need to restructure that piece. We need to you know, fix up this. Oh, hey, we should refactor that part over there. And, and and so that's how we're trying to build the project. We're trying to make everything we do here on the stream a little bit more real that way. Uh, so feel free to check some of that out. Okay. I go ahead and do that. And as I said, uh, links are there in the chat and also down below the stream. Okay, so we have policy game data game data is newly created thing so this is um, setting up data for the new pro setting up data access for the game now um, set up new uh, data access for the game okay So this is a big, big undertaking here. This little, this little change we're making here. Uh, so that's why I brought this out as a separate uh, branch in our uh, GitHub repository. Don't want to go this far out on this uh, without one. This is going to be an I game repository. This is going to take in, which also means in the module, when we set this up, we need to register this. EF game repository. Uh, ooh, no, um, I need to do this. We need to create one, because we're going to need to actually have this one that runs. We're going to register an instance. Nope. <laughs> I like my little connection string right there. It's really, really classy. That'll just be our repo. Repo as implemented inter as implemented interfaces. Single instance, obviously single instance, because there's only this one that we're putting in here, uh, and that'll get that set up. So. I'm putting a nope there because we don't have the connection string. I don't want to run this version of the code. Um, because this module doesn't do anything yet. Or th this doesn't do anything yet. Because this doesn't actually connect to the database. Because we're creating a new database. It doesn't exist yet. Okay. Um, so that has all the data for that, which I like. That's set up. It's pretty simple. This is our initial setup. We're going to need to verify data is created and everything. Oops. So this creates our records and saves them. So that looks good. That should be fine. Don't need that open. Don't need that open. There we go. Okay, so uh, next thing this needs is... Um, we need to build in the, uh, how to phrase this, um, we need to actually get the data to exist. We need to have a real database in here is the next big thing. 
Okay. Uh, couple of things that I want to mention. So, tomorrow, we are actually going to be doing an interesting stream here on Dev Chatter. Uh, I think all of our streams are pretty interesting, but uh, tomorrow is a more unique one. Uh, because of the fact that uh, Natsu, I'm not going to run it. It was not going to work yet. We don't have a database on it. Uh, so when I run it, I'm going to switch back to the other branch, and we're going to run the branch that, that actually works. Because um, uh, the database isn't there, so that connection string we put in won't do anything. Uh, although we could yank the connection string that we were going to use and wire it up and tell it to actually create that database, and then it probably would run, but I'm going to save that for the next stream about it. Anyway, tomorrow we are going to actually have Rachel here on the show. Uh, you can see the information here in our upcoming streams. And uh, it definitely says there that we are doing a special event tomorrow. That is Tuesday, November 6th, and uh, at 2 p.m. And I still have... Uh, wow, I derped that. Hang on. Whoops. EST. EST. Let's do this. Hang on. I'm going to get this in one, one big go. I'm going to go ahead and just replace uh, EDT with EST. Replace all. I forgot to, forgot to flip that, everybody. That is my bad. Messed up time zones. That's what you get for just hard coding stuff. So there we go. Uh, we're now back on Eastern Standard Time. So, tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have Rachel here. We're going to talk about designing and programming accessible UIs. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to look at our existing UIs that we use in our applications here on the stream. Um, uh, no, no, no. Fuel Snable, wrong, wrong Rachel, although we could talk to her as well. There uh, are actually plenty of Rachels here in the uh, development world. Uh, it's a relatively common name. And uh, But yes, Fuel Snable, I am going to be talking to some people about F-Sharp. Uh, it is on my list this week to reach out to the list of F-Sharp people that uh, we're all recommended to bring in as people to talk with on our stream. Uh, so I want to try to do some F-Sharp learning here. Uh, so we'll probably be doing that soon. Okay, so, uh, as I said, tomorrow we're going to have a guest up in that corner, up there. So, uh, she will be up there, we're going to do a dual stream, going to do a bit of pair programming, hopefully she can help us make some of our stuff a little bit better. Uh, we want to make our, specifically, um, this, uh, and maybe she can help figure out what we should do with this. Because uh, we kind of made this, it doesn't work that great, but she might be able to make some recommendations for how we should build uh, this piece of our application. Um, realistically, I wish this were working a little bit better uh, before we bring her in, but we could also talk with her about how we should set up our game tracker. So we have a couple of applications that we've been working on that I would love to talk with her about. Um, we'll, we'll see what, what she's up for there. Uh, but that's what she wants to focus on, so that's what we're going to do. So should be good. Either way... Uh, I want to make sure that I thank everybody who showed up today and uh, talked with me. We had a couple of people that subscribed, a bunch of people that followed. You're all awesome. If you are here, uh, don't go yet. Make sure you hit that follow button. Uh, we are um, always, always glad to have new people joining Dev Chatter, and uh, we want to welcome you. And one of the best ways that we do that is by saying hello. And uh, glad you enjoyed the stream today and hung out with us for a little bit. Please make sure to check out our Discord. It is one of the best ways to talk with me and the other uh, developers here on the stream. We have a lot of open source projects that we do here on the stream, and you are actually all welcome to uh, make suggestions, contributions, anything like that that you want to to our projects. So uh, I linked over there into the chat with our GitHub. It's at github.com slash devchatter. So if you are interested in taking a look at any of the source code for any of the stuff we do here on the stream, you can actually find all of that at github.com slash devchatter. Uh, Sue Flower Dev. Uh, thank you for that uh, for that follow. Greatly appreciated. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Uh, other things. If you want to see some of our old episodes, we actually have a lot of content that is here in the video section on Twitch or on YouTube. Uh, either one of those places. I link to the YouTube over there, and you can find information down below the stream for all that stuff as well. Uh, if you don't, you should follow me on Twitter. I am at Brendonius. It is a great way to get information about what we're going to be doing on the stream, but actually even better is to join our Discord, because uh, I usually talk with the Discord about that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you want to follow Dev Chatter on Twitter instead of me, 
Uh, I also have a dev chatter feed that you can use to just get information about dev chatter. Uh, and that is dev chatter with an underscore on the end because Twitter doesn't make that stuff available even if you own the website. Anyway, um, we have uh, a couple of other things that I want to click. And that is, I am doing my Learn to Code in C Sharp series again. So please, if you are a new developer or know someone that is, make sure that you check out and get notifications on that event over there that I just linked to in the chat that is Learn to Code in C Sharp with us. We are doing episodes again of our Learn to Code in C Sharp series. So if you are a beginner, you can follow along. We're using VS Code and the .NET Core SDK to do some uh, beginner level C Sharp programming. It's follow along. So you just go ahead and bring up the stream, watch it, have VS Code running, and just do what we're doing is the whole idea. I'm gonna be explaining as we go so you get some understanding of what it is we're doing, and it is a reasonable way of having guided learning as you learn the language. Okay, uh, tomorrow our stream is actually gonna be the same time that it started today, so that is three hours before now. Um, so, if you wanna know, what our schedule is you can ask our bot you can check down below that sort of thing is schedule not running you gotta be kidding me maybe it's just slow anyway uh gareth are the learn from scratch streams recorded and do you have them in order uh gareth yes i do so uh, our learn to code series i actually did a while back we did seven episodes but we have restarted it so starting last week uh we made that available so uh there is on the youtube channel you can actually find a playlist over on the YouTube channel. So if you go there, check out the playlist on the Dev Chatter channel on YouTube, you will find our Learn to Code series there. That has all of our original seven episodes. Uh, we did those back in June. And then for the new series, if you want to find that, the best place is to actually use that link because this stuff over here, if you scroll down to the most recent episode, you can actually just click watch the video. So if you know anybody that wants to catch up with that, you can. I noticed that we've had 66 people uh, <laughs> go back and watch our old uh, Learn to Code in C Sharp episode, so probably people that want to be available for episode two. So if you want to be one of those people or know someone that you uh, think wants to learn how to code, you can actually have them watch this video to follow along and catch up, and then they can be live with us for episode two. Uh, we're still going to make sure things are pretty simple. Even if you didn't watch the first episode, you should be able to follow along. Uh, but that is the uh, that is the idea so uh, we're gonna try to make sure that even when we get to like episode 7 of that one that even if you're a beginner you can show up uh, you probably won't get as much out of it if you didn't go if you don't go through all the others first but we're hoping that you don't get totally left behind uh, so everyone is welcome to join uh, I mean as long as you're not a you know jerk to the other viewers and things like that but uh, if you already know C Sharp, feel free to show up and help other people learn, uh, as it is actually a lot of fun to teach people how to program. Okay. Let me click that button, and then this will happen. So, I want to make sure that I thank everybody uh, who helped out today. So, our moderators, uh, SNB and uh, Nightbot. I don't want to thank Nightbot. Stoolpenner. SNB and Stoolpenner, thank you, mate. Thank you. Uh, we had a bunch of people follow, so thank you if your name is in that list. Uh, I greatly appreciate that you click that follow button. Uh, it does mean a lot to us here because it means you're enjoying the content and lets us know. Uh, and then uh, M uh, MJ Eaton and Snakehead, thank you very much for the resub and sub, respectively. Always appreciate the support as it makes it much easier for me to do these streams because, uh, you know, uh, I actually spend a bunch of money on various stuff for it and it takes out time that I could otherwise, you know, be doing like uh, consulting work. So, welcome, thanks. Uh, and I will catch everybody on the next one. And, uh, we just got a follow. So thank you, uh, uh, Jokoho482. Uh, thank you very much for that follow. And, uh, happy coding, everyone. Take care. I will see you tomorrow. And, uh, in about 21 hours. So, same time we started today. Thanks, all. See ya. Thank you.